11183 Jayacham Rajendra College, Mysore. I think yesterday you had a question for Professor Purani. Are you ready with that question again? Over to you. So my question is, what the use of shockwaves present in a system? Means, please clarify the shockwaves, what are the benefits in turbines? Means energy producing devices and compressors, energy absorbing devices and also transmitting this nozzles. What are the function of these shockwaves in these types of devices and why you need to study about these shockwaves? Okay, so the, the question is on uh, shockwaves and if they occur in uh, energy producing and or energy absorbing devices, what is the use of uh, these shockwaves? I will actually say that these shock waves are totally undesirable when it comes to uh, uh, an either energy producing or energy, I should say power producing or power uh, absorbing devices. So in general, the objective would be not to have these shock waves in situations like these because as we have seen, shock waves are associated with uh, irreversibilities and irreversibilities will degrade the performance of the system. So the short answer is that there is no use of shock waves in these uh, devices. Uh, there are some situations in which you just cannot avoid the shock waves being present and in that situation you should be able to at least figure out what the effect of these shock waves is and therefore we perform the analysis. Uh, the only situations where shock waves are probably going to be useful is uh, something of a futuristic application where people are thinking about uh, what are called as uh, supersonic ramjet type engines where uh, the combustion efficiency can probably be increased by artificially creating shock waves within the combustion chamber because there is a phenomenon associated with uh, shock induced mixing and the idea is that perhaps uh, such, a, such a phenomenon will enhance the mixing between the oxidizer and the fuel in those kinds of applications. However, these applications are not at all uh, developed fully, they are under uh, development and maybe in the next 15-20 years you may see such, uh, such things in, in practice. But as of now, I will say that if you are dealing with uh, power producing or power absorbing machines that we normally use, shock waves would be totally undesirable for those. Thank you. So, these shock waves are attached to the surface or above the surface in the fluid flow columns? Uh, so, the question is on whether the shock waves are attached to the surfaces or up, detached from the surfaces. Uh, see, the attached or detached type of a shock wave will come only when you are talking about a multidimensional steady type flow. Uh, we have analyzed in this part of the course only a simple normal shock wave. However, to answer your question, uh, depending on the shape of the object, the, uh, the shock can be attached to the surface or it can be detached. So for example, if you imagine something like a sharp pointed nose type uh, object like a, a wedge or a, or a cone which is flying supersonically, then the shock is going to be attached at the nose. But if you think about a blunt uh, nose type body like a, let us for example say a bullet or a missile which is uh, flying supersonically, then the shock for, for such objects is going to be detached from the surface. Thank you. Sir, flow measuring devices like venturometer, nozzle meter and orifice meter, they are having a ISO standard value, sir. Okay. Similar nozzle, we have the standard value, sir, for analysis purpose or further studying purposes through CFD. See, I think you are referring to flow measuring devices which are routinely used for such purpose and there is some standardization involved. However, we have not really talked about the, the nozzles etc. that we discussed in this class uh, being used for any flow measurement type uh, uh, purpose and therefore, I do not think really that there is any standardization associated with the kind of uh, devices that we have talked about at least. Thank you. Sir, that is not the question sir, actually for, to study the, this conversion divergent nozzle, we need a one model or a specification. Where do you get this, uh, this specification of uh, CD nozzle sir? Oh, I mean the shape of the nozzle. Uh, I, I assume perhaps that you are talking about the profile or the shape of the nozzle as some sort of a uh, specification or a standardization 
and the answer is that uh, we do not really consider any specific or standardized shape for the C D nozzles etcetera. As long as any shape which is reasonably conforming to our quasi one dimensional approximation which simply means that the cross sectional area of the nozzle is slowly changing along the flow direction is sufficient for the purpose of our simple analysis. There are some specific applications where nozzle profiles are defined for specific uh, end applications, but those are definitely out of the scope of this, uh, this class for which you will have to refer to uh, specialized compressible flow textbooks. As of now what you can uh, keep in mind that as long as we are dealing with a quasi one dimensional situation as far as cross sectional area changing very slowly in the flow direction, the shape of the nozzle or the profile of the nozzle really does not uh, play any part. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you, sir. Sir, back. Right hand, sir. Yeah, please go. Sir, uh, in a real gas, PV is equal to. Hello. Hello. Yes, go sir, ahead. In a real gas, PV is equal to ZRT. Yes, sir, sir uh, actually, what that uh, Z is uh, mean, mean, sir? What does it mean? That is compressibility factor. Okay. Uh, do not write it as PV equals ZRT because that is a that gives a totally uh, odd picture. Uh, for an ideal gas we know PV equals RT or PV by RT is 1. Okay. So, for a real gas PV by RT PV by RT is not 1 and for some reason it is given the symbol Z and called a compressibility factor. In fact, Z is simply a ratio of PV R and T, there is no compressibility of any kind involved. Compressibility means you are increasing the pressure and studying the change in volume, there is nothing of that sort. It is unfortunate that it is called a compressibility factor and it is used as a dimensionless number to plot uh, properties of uh, various fluids as uh, a function of uh, dimensionless temperature and dimensionless pressure. So, that, that chart is known as the compressibility chart, over. Sir, uh, last one thing sir, actually in this course I learned la lot of from your uh, center sir, that is why uh, we from this center we tell to thank you for this one sir, over and out, out sir. Thank you, over and out. 1148 Krishna Institute, Ghaziabad, over to you. Uh, what is the basic difference between the reversible adiabatic and adiabatic process? See, and uh, what is the question is what is the difference between a process which is reversible adiabatic and a process which is only adiabatic? Okay. Uh, we have defined an adiabatic process as work transfer only, so this means there is no heat transfer. D Q is 0. A reversible process, uh, we have defined it in detail as something which can go forward and reverse by retracing the path in the complete detail, retracing all the interactions in complete detail in such a way that when it is executed in the forward direction and in the other direction bringing the systems involved back to their original state, no trace of the processes having taken place is ever left, is ever available. That is the reversibility and after developing second law of thermodynamics, this comes to a situation that for a reversible process d q should be not 0, d q should be equal, d s should be equal to d q by t. This is for a reversible process. So, if d q is 0, it is adiabatic. If d q by t equals d s, then it is reversible. So, if you have reversible and adiabatic, that means not only is this equation applicable, but this equation is applicable. So, if you have adiabatic and reversible, That means, since both these equations are applicable, this also means d s equals 0. So, adiabatic and reversible means isentropic. But 
adiabatic by itself does not mean isentropic, it only means d q equals 0, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. One zero four zero. College of Engineering, Pune. Over to you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, uh, the the query is regarding uh, uh, thermal power plant. Case study of a thermal power plant of uh, small size. Okay. Uh, in this power plant, the flow through the turbine, steam flow through the turbine is almost double than the rated quantity. Now in this, uh, there can be two reasons. Uh, one is that in general, uh, which is seen, that the uh, filling through, internal filling through the turbine and uh, flow through the nozzles. Keeping these two things apart, what could be any other reason which uh, to be seen specified? Difficult to say, but uh, what does this have to do with thermodynamics? You have a small power plant and you say that the turbine flow rate is double the design flow rate. That, well, in principle, I cannot say that there is anything against it, but generally this does not happen. And what does it have to do with our thermodynamics course? That is something which I do not understand now. Over to you. Uh, sir, means uh, his question, sir, is related to thermal uh, power plant. Uh, basically, to run the thermal power plant, the cost required more than electricity, one unit. So, we want to run this plant as per uh, means the unit rate as compared to electricity. See, you can extract some more power from a turbine. But you, I do not think you will be able to ever double the flow rate through that turbine. You are far away from the normal design and operating condition. And uh, even at off design conditions, what happens to the turbine and how it behaves depends significantly on the internal details of the turbine, which we are not looking at during our course in thermodynamics. Remember, our turbine was us for us was simply a black box. All that we said is, is the inlet enthalpy is this, exit enthalpy is this, flow rate is this. This is the power output you should get. That is it. We stop there. Over to you. Uh, sir, but uh, suppose we want to study this. So, give the guidelines, sir. No, you, you attend a course in energy conversion or steam turbines and then you will get more than guidelines for this. 1002 Amal Jyoti Kottayam, over to you. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Uh, sir, we have come to understand now that uh, adiabatic constant volume process or adiabatic constant pressure process or adiabatic isothermal process can also take place. Yes. But these type of uh, examples are not worked out in conventional uh, textbooks, sir. Right. Mm -hmm. can, can there be a source for mat or materials for, for our students on this matter, sir? Yes. See, uh, I, uh, I have noticed and it has been brought to my notice that uh, students have and many teachers also have a mental set, which means adiabatic. Quite often when I ask, what is adiabatic, the answer is PV raised to gamma is constant. We have seen during our exercise that adiabatic is just dW only or dQ equals 0. And for, if for you to reach from adiabatic to PV raised to gamma is constant, there are a number of uh, assumptions which you have to make. So, PV raised to gamma constant is a very special case. And as you said, it is very nice that you have appreciated that an adiabatic process can also have 
uh, can also be a constant volume process or a constant pressure process or an isothermal process. Unfortunately, the so called standard textbooks do not have many examples or hardly have any examples of this kind. I think I have been able to put some examples of this kind in the exercise sheet. But since we are teachers of thermodynamics, it is for us to set up examples of this kind for our students and give them as additional exercises along with whatever are there in the books. That is how we have created these exercises. And I think you should also create your own, it is not very difficult. In fact, one lacuna which I find in these exercises is there is hardly any exercise in which uh, delta E is significantly different from delta U. And I have noticed that and uh, I, am, I will try to include now some exercises in which along with delta U or you have even delta E k or delta E p which is significant. I think the only exercise or one of the few exercises in which uh, delta u uh, apart some component other than delta u is significant is the gun air gun and bullet problem. I think somewhere in the first law 1.7 and also the last problem in combined first and second law C L 6 that is somebody throwing a sack of uh, sack of sand onto a professor that one over to you sir i have got one more question in psychrometrics sir so, the question is sir, see at a particular temperature the dry air can hold a maximum certain saturation level of water so, what is the property why the air has got certain affinity to water and what limits the maximum quantity saturation level of this water at a particular temperature so the question is regarding um, what uh, kind of um, uh, or what uh, what is the affinity uh, of putting uh, water vapor into air uh, there is no such thing you can put any uh, vapor into or any vapor into uh, air the only thing is what you have to worry about is uh, there is a saturation pressure corresponding to the existing temperature and as long as you reach that saturation pressure, you can't put in anything more. If you want to put in anything more, you have to raise the temperature. So if you want to have uh, uh, one atmospheric uh, uh, or a pressure of one atmosphere, you will need to raise the temperature to 100 degrees. So similarly, instead of water vapor, if you want to put in any other uh, vapor of any other fluid, then um, corresponding to that vapor pressure, you can put in as much of vapor of that fluid. So let's say it is 30 degrees C and instead of uh, water there is some other uh, refrigerant you want to put in. Just check the vapor pressure of that uh, fluid uh, at uh, 30 degrees C and that is the maximum amount you can put in. So what you can put in depends on the saturation pressure corresponding to the existing temperature. Thank you. My question is to Professor Gaitonde. Sir, uh, you have mentioned uh, diabetic process can happen at constant temperature. Sir, in that case, will it be a quasi static process? Can we consider the equation PV raised to gamma is a constant? Again, you are confusing PV raised to gamma. An adiabatic process means dq equals 0. Constant temperature process itself means at least along an isotherm, all states are defined. So, moment is a constant temperature to a significant extent you have already made an assumption that it is quasi static because at every stage temperature is defined. Okay. So, an adiabatic process only means no heat interaction of any kind. It can be quasi static, it can be non quasi static. Keep in mind as uh, your colleague has earlier said that adiabatic means dq is 0 throughout the process. The process may follow any route while maintaining that constraint. So, it can be constant volume, constant pressure, constant temperature. It can be PV raised to gamma is constant. If you can arrange other interactions that is only work type of interaction, it can be 
p raised to gamma into v equals constant provided you arrange the other interactions accordingly. Some of these things will be possible because remember some of these will be impossible because for an adiabatic process the second law says that the process can take place only in a direction in which the entropy increases. So, so long as you select a direction in which the entropy increases or at most does not change you can execute that process, but an adiabatic process in which you expect that the entropy decreases that will not be allowed by the second law of thermodynamics and this will be an impossible process and unrealistic process. So, although we say uh, for example, you take a fluid in a rigid container adiabatic, I can stir it that is a work interaction, the suppose it is a gas temperature will rise, it is an adiabatic constant volume process and we have solved an exercise based on that, but you say it is an adiabatic constant volume process in which temperature should reduce by some means that will not be possible, because for a gas at constant volume entropy reduces as the temperature reduces, okay. that is the simple entropy relation. And hence, for an adiabatic constant volume process, a process in which you expect the temperature to reduce will not be allowed, because that is an unrealistic process. So, we will close this session now.